there is a whole debate taking the internet by storm today about the one and only former first lady Michelle Obama. And I'm just going to say this for the record up front because I'm feeling a little salty about it. How long, how long has Isabel Brown been saying everywhere on the internet that Joe Biden, more likely than not, was not going to be the nominee for the Democrat Party in 2024? And more likely than not, we were probably looking at a ticket of Gavin Newsom and Michelle Obama in one way, shape or form, either one as president or vice president going into the 2024 election. I'm really tired of everybody telling me that I was a crazy person for the last several years suggesting that that'll never happen. That would never, ever, ever happen in a million years. Joe Biden is absolutely going to be the nominee. Hmm. All of those people seem to be agreeing with my point of view now. It's looking a whole lot clearer to people today that Michelle Obama is likely running for president or vice president in some capacity. And the reason that I've been saying this since 2020 really had to do with understanding politics from a 4D chess perspective. I don't care what political background you come from. I don't care what party you support. This is literally just about political strategy. And if you're interested in learning about how some of this stuff works, I worked in Washington several times. I worked for the US Senate for a senator from Colorado for a while. And then in college, I interned at the White House uh, in 2018 under President Trump. Trump. I've done some work on several different campaigns at various different levels of government. Obviously, I've worked with many political nonprofits over the years and been very attached to what's happening inside and outside of Washington. The longer I spent in Washington, the more I started picking up on how they plant stories and how they specifically try to change the tide of public opinion outside of Washington, D.C. And it's not through ways that you probably ordinarily would expect. It's not through major op-eds or big TV press conferences or even pieces of legislation. If people are really, really smart when it comes to the campaign world, they realize that changing politics means going upstream to change culture first. Andrew Breitbart was famous for saying that politics is always downstream from culture. And if you want to impact what's happening at the White House or in the U.S. Congress or who gets nominated to the Supreme Court, you always need to challenge and change culture first. How people are dating, what TV shows they're watching, what their favorite Saturday afternoon activity looks like. And over the last two years or so, strategically, Michelle Obama, Barack as well, but mostly Michelle, has been planted over and over and over again to do interviews in lifestyle podcasts and in late night TV. In like, And they never talk about politics, ever. They talk about the fact that the girls are all grown up and they come home and they make us charcuterie boards and we talk about college and how fun that is for them. And it's so fun to see them as adults. But Michelle Obama has yet to do a major interview about politics until this week because you you don't have control over them mm -hmm. and you wonder where are people where are we in this you know where are our hearts what's going to happen in this next election these are the things that keep me up at night i'm going to replay this these are the things that keep me up at night the things about our hearts and the things about people and specifically did you hear that this next election is keeping me up at night. The things that yeah. keep me up because you, you don't have control over them mm -hmm. and you wonder. And it keeps me up because I don't have control over it. Where are people, where are we in this? You know, where are our hearts? What's gonna happen in this next election? I am terrified about what could possibly happen. I am terrified about what could possibly happen in this next election. Hmm. Because our leaders matter. Who we select, who speaks for us, who holds that bully pulpit. It affects us in ways that I, sometimes I think people take for granted. Our leaders matter. Who we elect, who speaks for us, who the president is going to be matters in ways that people often take 
for granted. So in isolation, you might think, okay, Isabel, you're reading way too much into this. She is not saying that she's running for president of the United States. She didn't even hint that she was running for president of the United States. First of all, I think you'd have to be blind and stupid to not think that she's at least hinting to run for something and have a leadership capacity because this is the first time in any of these interviews of which she's done dozens upon dozens in the last year or so that she's talked about needing control the election and who our leaders are. So there's absolutely at least a hint there. But even if you think I'm reading way too much into this, you can't look at this interview in isolation because there's another story about the 2024 election that's going hugely viral this week. Some really high ranking former Obama administration advisors in the Obama White House saying that Joe Biden probably doesn't have the best trajectory in the 2024 election. That happened a few weeks to a few months ago. Some really high ranking people in the Obama administration came forward and said, we actually don't think Joe Biden has the greatest chance to win. We would encourage him to step down if we were advising his campaign. That was a little story that went wildly underreported about several weeks to several months ago out of Washington. But now, as of yesterday, a J.P. Morgan strategist, this is from Business Insider, is specifically predicting that Joe Biden is going to drop out of the 2024 race. This is not a random op-ed from a tiny blog website on some dark corner of the dark web internet. This is Business Insider running this story. The economy was reporting on this story. Several different left-wing news organizations were sharing very similar headlines. The way that Washington works, if you haven't worked in Washington, D.C., or you haven't spent a lot of time learning about politics, or you don't binge every single great political TV show of all time. By the way, Veep is literally playing out before our very eyes right now and is one of the best and most accurate TV shows about what it's like to work in Washington. The fact that this headline was run in Business Insider yesterday, in The Economist yesterday, in all kinds of left-leaning major news outlets means this is probably happening. So if our leaders matter, who better to elect than somebody that the left universally loves, worships? Like, I've never seen this type of admiration for anybody in politics ever before than I have seen for Michelle Obama. And most of you guys could probably relate to that. There's just this level of like almost religious fanaticism about supporting Michelle Obama. And I highly doubt any of them want Kamala Harris to actually be the first female president. But what a legacy for the left if Michelle Obama was able to be the first female president. They are very, very, very strategically planting this headline and that video in the media at the exact same time. This is how Washington works in order to make sure that people draw the natural conclusion in their own two brains. So here's what this JP Morgan strategist is saying. Business Insider reported yesterday, Joe Biden could pull out from this year's presidential elections, says a JP Morgan strategist, Michael Sembalest, Kembalest, says Biden's withdrawal could happen sometime between Super Tuesday and the November election. That's like the longest chunk of time possible. So let me explain that a little bit to you. The way that the DNC nomination rules work is very, very different from how the Republican nomination process works. And all of the rules are fundamentally different. If you guys remember a few years ago when Bernie was winning like primary after primary after primary and everybody said that Hillary Clinton essentially stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Basically, who you nominate at the DNC, regardless of what the primaries actually look like ends up being the nominee. So it's highly likely that at any time Joe Biden can say, yeah, even though I won all of these primary elections, I don't really want to be the nominee anymore. And at the convention, somebody else ends up getting nominated that has widespread support from all of the delegates to the DNC convention. Their rules work very, very differently from the Republican Party. So this isn't out of the question and is actually pretty likely as to something that could happen. They say this is business insider, not exactly a right wing friendly publication. And many other left wing publications have headlines and stories very similar to this. Biden's candidacy has been beset with concerns over his low approval ratings and his advanced age. President Joe Biden may not be on November's ballot papers, says this asset management strategist. He predicted, they're testing the waters here, that Biden would drop out from the race sometime between Super Tuesday and the November election, citing health reasons. I'm sorry. 
How many times? I'm sorry I'm so salty about this, but how many times have I said exactly this would happen? Super Tuesday is set for March 5th with 16 states and territories holding their primaries on and caucuses. But like I just said, Biden would then be replaced by a candidate named by the DNC. Basically, they would say that they don't care who won all of the primaries. They don't care how any of these elections work. They would just name somebody new. America, as we begin this election year, we must be clear, democracy is on the ballot. Your freedom is on the ballot, which is ironic for a zillion possible reasons. Uh, but this is the end of the free world as we know it. If Donald Trump wins election again, it's going to be insurrection every day. He's a literal dictator. We have to do everything we can to make sure that this doesn't happen. And out of the shadows, two people are going to step forward to save American democracy and safeguard our country from what they're going to call white supremacy or MAGA extremism or like insane alt-right fascism, whatever they're trying to call it. And it's going to be Michelle Obama and Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom, as a conservative, you might think, oh my gosh, who would ever, ever support that? But also like Michelle Obama has wild, unfailing support, mostly from young left-wing voters going into any election, obviously, but particularly a major presidential election. Am I right? Is my prediction probably going to come true? Do you guys think I'm reading way too much into this? I don't. I, I mean, I think there's a zillion predictions in that little clip where she starts talking about politics for the first time ever, but maybe I'm just reading way too much into it and playing the tinfoil hat game. I don't know. I don't know.